Lately, when I play, when I try to play the Grand Prix Attack, which is normally Knight C6, F4, G6, Knight F3, and Bishop B5, in Sicilian, Black tries to avoid it by playing A6 or E6 on the second move. And A6 on the second move became very popular lately for the I the idea of a6 move is black does not want to play f6 a6 after knight f3 because white may go c3 and d4 and here if after knight c3 black plays a6 and knight f3 then black can get the regular paulson system but what do we do Grand Prix players, if we don't want to get Paulson, there were a couple of very interesting ideas for uh, White. Well, first of all, I do, I already mentioned it before, that I do recommend, uh, one of my recommendations was to play regular Paulson with G3 and you can find find extensive analysis uh, on that but let me give you a couple of more ideas on what to do after A6 actually it's not me who is giving you ideas but I picked up these two Spanish players played and actually I was impressed the way it was handled by White F4 still hoping for uh, uh, Grand Prix, e4, c5, f4, knight c6, now was played knight f3, e6, g3, and d5. Uh, now, after d5, white played simply d3, and black played d takes e now this is interesting moment the um uh, if black does not play d takes e we're gonna go bishop g2 and e5 later i already uh, partially analyzed it in a way analyzed this position but black played d takes e and if white t plays d takes e they don't have much of an advantage so black played knight takes e4 and this position considered good as a good position for a black now before uh, bla uh, a black so black played knight h6 and the idea of knight h6 to play knight on f5 control control the center central d4 square after knight f5 uh, a knight h6, bishop g2, knight f5, and castling. Black played simply bishop e7. White played c3. And here, for no reason, b black played b6. It's hard to imagine that white can take advantage of uh, this bishop on the diagonal of h1 a8 well b6 was played was played in uh, order to play bishop b7 the correct move i think was castling but on b6 when g4 and game was practically over in a very few moves knight d6 and now knight to e5 and uh, black is in a lot of trouble for example on bishop b7 white can simply take on c6 and on bishop takes c6 knight f6 check as you can tell uh, white is winning material here so black uh, played knight takes e5 
but that doesn't help because knight takes d6, queen takes d6, and here before taking rook on a8, white simply took the knight, and now black queen must, black must minima, minimize the um, uh, losses, but after queen b8, queen f3, and you see pawn on f7 hangs, and the rook hangs on a8, game is practically over. This is just another thought, well, just to show you how flexible are white, is white here, how d different ideas we can explore, we can come up with. But remember, the best ideas in the chess openings, the best ideas are the ones you can come up with, because they the best not because the value of the uh, 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 the quality of the move but because you would know then better everything around this uh, innovation and that will uh, improve you as an overall chess player okay now let's go back and I want to tell you I want to show you something even more interesting uh, novelty that was played by Nigel Short in a simul game. E4, as we know, uh, Nigel Short also big fan of uh, the Grand Prix attack. Knight C3, and on Knight C3, uh, A6, F4, E6, Knight f3 and d5. Well, here we would play d3 normally and we will get the positions that we just talked about. But Short's approach to this position is also very interesting. And I can tell you this, I can vouch for white to get big, big positional advantage but they get at least a comfortable game with a slight advantage. Short play d4, and I really like this move. c takes d. Well, of course, there may be different possibilities. If black plays, for example, knight c6, there may be an e5 move getting uh, to a French defense with the unclear why a6 was played. It's a possibility. Also, black, white can play simply bishop e3, uh, transposing to something uh, what happened in the game. Well, anyway, white played c takes d, knight takes d4, and now d takes e. Of course, maybe they didn't want to have an isolated pawn in the center, or maybe they didn't want white to play e5 d takes e knight takes e4 and now knight f6 knight takes f6 queen takes f6 let's evaluate this position what does black have developed they developed only one knight with his exchange which is exchanged and right now they all they have to show for their development is the queen on f6 bishop e3 i can conclude that white is has at least a small advantage bishop e3 bishop c5 and queen d2 simply preparing to cast along black castles and white castles and now black goes bishop d7. What black wants to develop the rest of the pieces. And this is actually uh, guaranteed, as I already said, better position for uh, um, white. Now, after bishop d7, we played, b he played, short played bishop d3. And obviously black cannot take on d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, because bishop takes h7, winning the queen. So, 
a black correctly continues its development. So what black did, played knight c6, knight takes c6, bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, bishop takes c6, and rook hg1. It's a good move because it's, uh, it supports the pawn, it protects the pawn and supports the pawn's movement to g4, g5. Now, this position is better for white because they have clear, clear plan of attacking black's king. And black, black's pieces are not really as ready to attack white's king. And we know the rule when king's castled on the opposite sides of the board, huge majority of the times, um, plans, uh, th they're gonna start attacking each other's kings. And that's what happened here. And after white played rook h to g1, we, uh, black has to do something. The black has to come up with, uh, with a very constructive plan. So they, they went rook f to e8, they apparently want to go e5 and free their position. White correctly goes rook d to e1, preventing in rook a to d8. And uh, here, after rook a to d8, white goes g4, and starting attack as, was, as it was planned. Rook d4, f5. You see now, ef is not possible, because queen takes e8 will lead to a mate. Uh, so after f5, black played rook b4, threatening b2 pawn. And on rook b4, c3. And now black goes rook a4, threatening the other pawn. White goes g5, queen d8. Queen d8, and white goes f6. Uh, black has to go g6 here. Well, taking on a2 is really bad because after queen h3, I don't think uh, uh, black can survive. Now on g6 will be queen h6, and there is no good way to protect uh, h7 pawn. And rook a1 check can be made by king d2. And now black also has the rook hanging on a1 as well as mate on h7. So this was not possible. That's why black plays g6. But in my opinion, this position is already very, very bad for, uh, for black. White goes a3. And now black has these holes on a on g7, queen d5, and after queen h3, I don't think uh, there is a defense for uh, black. Well, actually, there is defense as far as black can go. Probably queen d6, and white does have an advantage even if they exchange queens. But white has several different ways to play. They can simply go bishop c2, followed by rook d1. White has better position. And remember, we are looking at this position from the opening standpoint. What we did prove that white has a good game. We're just looking at the game. We proved that white came up... Uh, it, with a better position from the opening. A black played rook takes a3 and after queen h6 resigned in the game, but that's irrelevant. What is relevant that we did get good position. Even after uh, black played queen d6, probable move is rook d1, uh, hoping for very strong attack, maybe bishop c2, and when rook moves somewhere, I don't know, then rook d1, white is clearly and unconditionally better.